All right, for those of you who don't know, um, good afternoon. I'm Abigail Shepherd. I'm from Wild Weasel Training. If you want to know about the name, please ask my business partner, Mike, and we'll tell, we can tell you all about that later on. Um, what I'm going to talk about briefly today is um, a little bit about why you should train. Um, we all talk about training, but it's one of the things that during a recession is the first thing to go from anyone's budget. So I'm just going to give a little bit about why we think you should continue training your staff. Um, and secondly, a little insight into how we would train people uh, if you came along to one of our courses. So the first thing I have to promise you, um, and it's a promise we give on all our courses, is that we don't give any of that. We are absolutely straight talking. We haven't read any books, I can probably guarantee you that, that tell you how to sell, how to manage. Everything we train is what we know. We've been business owners, managers, directors, salesmen in businesses combined, and this is a combined figure, for about 50 years. And we do know what we're talking about. So we always promise that to everybody. Equally, we don't do any role play. We don't like it. We don't get anything from our trainers from it. And so we don't do it. So those two things for you today. Firstly, what's your main objective in any business? It's that, isn't it? To get money in through the till. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, what you sell. If you're not taking more money in than you're giving out, you're not going to survive very long. So, what is training all to do with? Training, primarily, is making the most of your two biggest assets. And your two biggest assets are your stock and your staff. Now, one of those, you can go down to your financial director or your accounts controller or whoever it is that looks after your finances, and you could probably go back to the office today and say, right, can I have a stock tech? And they could probably tell you, to within a few pounds, how much your stock is worth. You can't do that with your staff. Your staff is very, very difficult to value. Is it what you pay them? Is it what they bring in? What else do they give to the business? They are absolutely vital. And those are the two main things that you need to work with. Now, we can't do very much about your stock. Your stock is your stock. Your product is your product. But your staff, we can help with that. Now, we're in a football environment. We're in a sports place. Um, so we'll give you a bit of an analogy that might uh, fit in. And I apologize to some for the picture. That was built a few years ago, just down the road. That cost, according to Wikipedia, £93 million to build that stadium. Now, does a football team pay £93 million for a stadium and then fill it with a pub football team? Apologies to Sir Robert Peel pub. You don't, do you? You build a football stadium and you fill it with good talent. And we know he's good, because we all recognise him but you fill it with the right talent. But if you look at businesses, that's what business does. So they get a shop, and they get some nice stock, and they fit it out, and they put this lovely sign over the door, and they get some flyers printed, and some business cards, and this, that, and the other, and then they just get a couple of people to stand in there and do the stuff. And then they don't invest in those staff, and they don't train them. And they wonder why they don't get anything. Olympics last year, uh, I caught Olympics fever, I'm not ashamed to say that, I absolutely loved it. Um, and like most people, I signed up to um, Twitter feeds and Facebook pages all over the place, and I'm still getting oodles of, of updates. And um, Jessica Ennis there, she won the, um, probably the pinnacle of female athletics. She won the heptathlon, got the gold medal in her home country, 80,000 people singing the national anthem, thank you very much, probably the best moment of her life. Six o'clock the next morning, she's up again training, pushing towards the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. Because sportsmen and women constantly train. Because they know that if you stop training, you don't stay at that level. You actually start going backwards. So why don't we constantly train our staff? Linking Jessica Ennis to Einstein is quite a leap, I do take you. Um, does anyone know Einstein's definition of insanity? Ooh. The definition of insanity, according to Einstein, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And isn't that what we do sometimes in business? We go in in the morning with the same stock and the same staff, and we haven't trained them, we haven't done anything, but we want to take more money today. We're going to do better today. But if you've not changed anything, how can you get anything different? So you might be thinking, well, what's in it for me when I train my staff? I've got five reasons. And those are they. They're all high street chains, 
We all know them, we all grow up with them. I can remember getting my driving licence, driving down to Blockbuster, picking up a video, um, excitedly driving at home, I need to find the tracking's gone. Part of who we are when we've grown up, but they're disappearing from our high streets. And if it can happen to them, can't it happen to us? So, hopefully, everyone's now thinking, that's why I should train my staff, because there is something in it for me. One of the things we sometimes do on our training, we do, we do a magic trick. Uh, now, I'm not uh, a magician, so I'm not going to have a big reveal. But we say to people, think about what makes your company different to everybody else. And I did this when I was a business owner with my business partner, Mike. And I sat there and I thought, yeah, I've got great stock. Oh, I've got great staff. They're really nice. They've got really good customer service. And, and yeah, we're really knowledgeable. We know about our stuff. Yeah, that's what it is. And I wonder how many of you have just ticked those things off in your mind as that being why your company is better than your competitors. Because we all think that, and your competitors think that. But actually, what made my staff different was that I trained them, and they knew how to sell. Now, one of the things that we trained them, and uh, Mike came over and did this with our guys, um, is this very simple phrase. Features tell, but benefits sell. And I'll give you a little example. We live on the south coast of England, and it does occasionally rain here from time to time. Only a couple of days during the summer. And so we've all got Gore-Tex jackets. Everyone got or seen a Gore-Tex jacket? And we know why it's brilliant. I have to read this because I can never remember it. Gore-Tex is a revolutionary bicomponent with over 9 billion microscopic pores made from polytetrafluoroethylene. And I did have to practice that. Does anyone actually give a monkey's what it is? Not really. Keeps you dry and stops you sweating. That's why we buy the stuff. Features tell, but benefits sell. Now, lastly, one of our favourite phrases. If you do what you've always done, you will get what you always got. If you want something different, if you want something more, you have to do something different. If you've got something that's very particular or you really want to hone in on your product and your services and your staff, then please do talk to us. Um, we're quite distinctive. We're wearing the orange T-shirts this morning. Um, we are a different company. Hopefully, some of this has been um, interesting to you this morning. Thank you very much for listening. We're around for a bit if you've got any questions and if you want to book a place. Thank you very much.